good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, wherever you are in the world. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kim Schofield, and this is Inspiration Tuesdays. so much for joining us. Today we are going to talk about sports and in particular the world's greatest pastime, baseball, with our very special guest Liz Banks, Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Let's Play 2 and Founder and President 500 Home Run Club. Liz, welcome to Inspiration Tuesdays. How are you? And it's my pleasure being here today. You were the wife of Ernie Banks, Mr. Cub, one of the most famous and revered baseball players in history. Can you tell me the role inspiration played in your lives and your mutual achievements? Well, what I, what I would like to say is Ernie, no ego at all. No ego at all and very much a person that embraced others, just had a warmth in his heart for others. And the most amazing thing to me, Ernie says, I never ever met a, a, a person I don't know. They're my friend. So literally he embraced every individual, young, old, as a friend. He had a compassionate interest in talking to them and communicating with them signing autographs, sharing a smile, sharing a story, or hearing something from them about the days when he played. What I learned from Ernie was how to be unselfish, to see good, not look for good, but to see good in other people. Ernie said when he played this game of baseball, it was something that he loved and he never ever dreamed he would have the opportunity to be a part of. When he was born in the 19, 30s. I mean, who could dream that baseball would be segregated and then integrated? So Ernie didn't walk into baseball joining the Chicago Cubs with an illustrious team. He started with the Negro Leagues, the Kansas City Monarchs. And that's why I'm very, very happy, uh, you know, to have them be a part of this. And also baseball's acknowledgement of the records of the esteemed professional Negro League players and their records. So this was a wonderful thing to happen and for it to be inclusive. So I take my hat off to the Commissioner of Baseball and the, the final acknowledgement of these wonderful records that the Negro League baseball players have achieved. So when we, we, we think about, you know, Ernie's journey from the Negro Leagues to the illustrious club of the Chicago Cubs, and one of his famous sayings is, let's play too. And he would say that because he loved to play double hitters. And at the time Ernie played, baseball was only played in the day. And in the summers, because their pay was not millions of dollars, they worked. So what we see today of these players, you know, and the high salaries, that was not the life that Ernie and the players of his day could recall. They very much lived in the communities. They worked in the communities. And I think maybe that's why they're so beloved and embraced to this very day. Something that you said really resonates with me about Ernie, that he never met someone he, he, didn't, he didn't know. I mean, he, he just felt like he was friends with everybody, but most importantly, that he always saw the good in other people. Now it's easy to see the good in other people when people are always good to you. But that was not the case, especially back then. A world where fairness and equality had never existed. At a time when most people believed it never could. A few men had the courage to press on for the good of their race and the betterment of America. 
What Jackie Robinson and Branch Rickey did with the Brooklyn Dodgers, they knew it would be monumental. They had no idea it would change the social fabric of America. I never really understood the segregation aspect of it until I went to see my brother Frank play in Atlanta in 1954. And I looked on the wall and there was a water fountain that said colored water fountain. How was that for me, coming from segregation to integration? It's the way you deal with it, you know, how you deal with it. It was just another place to go and play. Now, can you comment on the struggles that, that Ernie and other members of the Negro Leagues uh, encountered? I believe the men, because they were doing something that they loved. I mean, they actually loved. So they were very proud to be baseball players. And they were very proud to be in the community. And yes, yes, it was tough to be able to go and play with the team and not have to be able to go into a hotel and you're staying in, in, in boarding houses, literally, because they couldn't stay in hotels. Uh, and when they went to go get gas at gas stations, even though they were giving money, sometimes they were refused gas. So it's just the simple things that we take for granted of today and now. Um, and that that would be every facet to the ballparks, to the to 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 driving. I mean, they could even get in trouble just driving in their vehicles to go to the game or the buses. So it was very challenging. But in spite of all of that, what they had was a camaraderie. What they had was a feeling that they were making the community happier. They were making a difference, and they all they all loved each other and shared. And so it didn't make it seem like it was a burden because they were all going through it and they were all acknowledging it. And at the same time, they were doing a great job, you know, hitting the baseball, doing the things that they needed to do to entertain the fans. Why do you feel that sports is important? All over the world, sporting activities have provided great entertainment for audiences. And it's also a very positive experience. Sports among our youth is key in keeping them what? Off drugs, off the street, physically healthy. It also teaches them excellent, excellent lessons about life. It helps them get a better job, gives them discipline, teaches them how to be a team player, gives them positive development. And this is whether it's a male or a female enjoying sports, because we know today this is not just a male thing. We have just as many young girls that are out there playing and enjoying sports as we do have young men. So it's imperative that the government supports these things, that the school systems keep sports activities within the school, whether it's middle school, whether it's elementary school, whether it's high school, colleges, because it's very, very, very important. Well, do you think baseball is more inspirational or inclusive than other sports? Well, I think uh, because at a very young age, you will see kids with their grandparents, you know, sitting down and looking at the scores and doing the batting averages. And, and it, so it's also educational. We talk about mathematics, we talk about uh, different programs. So from a very, very early age, if they're watching sports and they're watching baseball and they're doing the numbers, it's a thing of fun. They're not even thinking that it's work. So I think it's very, very, very important. Uh, and baseball certainly has been a long time favorite and i'm not going to take away from soccer or football or any other other sports but i'm certainly saying the american family game i would certainly have to say is baseball now liz is there a website that we can visit um for more information about the exhibition game absolutely we are working on updating the website and that information should be up in 90 days so All right. i'm happy to share it with you Thank you for being a guest on Inspiration Tuesdays. Your passion for baseball is very contagious, and we hope to see an exhibition game here in the region in the very near future.
This is Kim Schofield. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, be well, and go forth and inspire.